<laughs> Thanks, Jonathan. <laughs> um, so, as uh, as Jonathan said, he gave, kind of gave me this amorphous task that was infinitely difficult, but also kind of, I hope, my, one of my take-home messages will be kind of simple, too. Um, so there are two answers here. So, just to give a little context, um, as Jonathan said, we kind of started talking some months ago, more or less in anticipation of, of today. Um, how would we assess the state of the environment in Jackson Hole? And we started talking about this, and you know, it quickly became apparent that there's a lot of data and a lot of information out there. A lot of people have measured different things about the ecosystem and the environment. Um, but what we were missing was, was this kind of concept of how do we bring this all together? And what are the things that we really <laughs> would most want to actually know about if we were going to make some kind of assessment of the state of the environment in this area? Um, so it became apparent that we really needed to take this step back and look through a variety of different lenses to try to understand what is it that this community values um, in terms of the environment. What is it that matters and that if we were going to assess the state of it would speak to the diverse set of perspectives in this in this community. So that was uh, that was the impetus for that and, and what I'm going to present here is, is kind of a uh, first draft, if you will, and I hope that it will spark conversation and feedback um, and criticism and, and all of that good stuff as the day continues. Right click. Right click. Right click. No? <laughs> huh. Okay. I'll try that again next time. <laughs> so just to give a, a, an overview here, first of all, um, what we're going to be talking about. Um, oh, that is not working. Sorry, there's a bunch of animations in here. Um, I just, okay, just next, yeah. Um, so our first major point here um, is that there are a wide variety of ways and different things that we, the humans here, how we benefit from the environment and the ecosystem every day. Our second point um, is that if we look through the diverse set of perspectives of people in this community um, and different points of view, what we find is that actually we, we find that there's a lot of similarities in the things that people uh, value that are important in terms of what the environment provides. Um, and then finally, um, however, we do not do a great job of explicitly acknowledging the value of these things on a daily basis. Um, so, next, if you would. Um, how we went about approaching this, essentially we conducted a series of semi-structured interviews with a variety of different people and, and asked them how they relate to the environment um, in various ways. And then, thank you, um, <laughs> we um, put that information together from the perspective of ecosystem services. Now ecosystem services is just a fancy term for what does the environment or the ecosystem do for us. Um, put in a more formal way, um, it is the, the aspects of the ecosystem utilized to produce human well-being. Um, and these things could be, they could be very tangible, like clean water. So that's something that, that the ecosystem provides that we can see, we can feel, we know what it is. It could be very intangible, like the pleasure that we feel when we interact with nature. All of those are ecosystem services. Uh, some of them are things we think about on a daily basis and maybe appreciate on a daily basis. Some of them are things that we take for granted and don't really appreciate or think about on a daily basis. So our job here was to try to put together the comprehensive list of all these things that seemed really important to this community uh, and try to organize them in some sensible way. Next. Um, and in doing so, we, we, we looked at it from the perspective of, of five key community attributes. And these are things that we felt were um, really critical to making life living here possible and worthwhile. Uh, and so these, these are economy, <coughs> recreation, arts and inspiration, health and well-being, and finally the infrastructure to support all of those things. And infrastructure includes the fact that we can live here, that there is room for houses, that there is housing, although we may talk about how it's not enough housing. Um, and a transportation network that enables us to move around and do all the things that we want to do or need to do. Um, now, I will also just acknowledge, though, that you know, drawing lines around these things is a little bit arbitrary. Um, 
because they do all interact with each other. And a very obvious example would be the fact that people come here as tourists to recreate, therefore recreation is part of the economy. But it also is not part of the economy in other forms of recreation. So we, we acknowledge that these things are all interconnected and that should become pretty obvious. But more importantly, um, there's this sense that, that all these things together create something that's greater than the sum of the parts. Um, and part of that has to do with just a sense of community cohesion and a sense of community that really is tremendously valuable to many, many people as well. Um, so I'm now going to turn it over to Chauncey, who has been my uh, partner in crime on this project. And she is going to um, talk about each one of these community attributes and some of the key take-home messages we learned about the critical ecosystem services that people see for each one of those. And then I will come back. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, they're here. Great. So I think much of what I'm about to talk about is perhaps already clear to you, but I bet you'll learn something or at least enjoy the photos. So economy. Jackson Hole has a thriving economy, and it's fueled by tourism. Tourism provides many jobs for the community. Obviously, it provides uh, jobs in the guiding services, hospitality, retail, but maybe less obviously, tourism and second homeowners also provide jobs for construction, real estate, and professional services like emergency workers. I think oftentimes people think about tourists as a them and us. And I encourage you to think of it more as a us and a greater us, because we're all part of this economy and community together. And it's important that we work together with our visitors to come up with a solution. So tourism is important. Why do they come here? Well, scenery and wildlife, also recreational opportunities. And that's obvious. But what enhances their experience is the quality of the air, the water, the snowpack, and that feeling of wildness. Wildness is a hard thing to define. It's that feeling of being in an undeveloped landscape with, where a moose might pop out at any moment, and you have to carry bear spray. It's a place where you can see undeveloped land and your mind starts to wander. It's mysterious. It's unpredictable. I think that's the special sauce of the Jackson Hole experience. Next. Recreation. Recreation is a huge pillar for Jackson. Tourists come here for recreation, as well as people move and stay here for all the recreational opportunities. And the environment provides many options. There are some obvious connections between recreation and the environment. Like winter recreation needs snowpack, and water sports need clean, abundant, flowing water. And hunting needs wildlife populations. But some other connections similar to tourism that really make our recreational experience pristine is that quality of the air, uh, the scenery, sometimes wildlife is a part of scenery when we're recreating as well, that access to solitude and also just access. Every informant or respondent we talked to <laughs> mentioned access and how this community is so special because of all the access we have, how you can skin Snow King on your lunch break. Or you, in, the, in a summer day, you can cram in together whitewater rafting, mountain biking, and a hike as well. Jackson has a truly inspirational, recreational uh, community, and we're really passionate. Arts and inspiration. Arts has been a big part of Jackson Hole since the beginning. Thomas Moran painted some of the first landscapes of our environment. And today we support many local artists in all the different mediums. Every person we talk to about what is inspiring about the environment towards art, they said scenery. But what does scenery mean? Well, drama of the landscape, first of all. We have these high, jagged mountains and these flat plains down below. We have plenty of scenic vistas with tons of sight lines and <laughs> Sorry, tons of sight lines and ample perspective. There's the charismatic wildlife species and open spaces and undeveloped land as well as the agricultural lands as well. 
Light is unique here because of our clean air as well as the alpenglow. Snow and conifers provide contrast, and the list goes on. It's no surprise that this community supports so many visual artists. But perhaps you're a non-visual artist, or perhaps you don't consider yourself an artist at all. Well, we all absorb the scenery every day, and we can all take different varieties of inspiration from it. People draw to devise calmness, <laughs> creativity, and a sense of wonder from looking at these scenic vistas or the Tetons. As many people say, seeing the Tetons never gets old. And as research supports, having a moment of awe can make us all feel more satisfied, more patient, and more willing to help others. Inspiration and awe is a big part of mental health. And in Jackson, we are lucky to have a generally healthy physical and mental health community. The Teton, Healthy Teton County Community Health Needs Assessment, recently <coughs> released, uh, measured this and drew many, con many um, connections between the environment and the health of our community. The needs assessment, as well as our uh, respondents, both relayed that the high uh, quality of our physical activity, as well as our access to exercise, benefits our physical well-being greatly. But what's a strong body without a strong mind? Well, luckily we have the scenery, the inspiration, the access to solitude, and a healthy environment, all to inspire mental clarity, stress reduction, relieve anxieties, etc. And some special shout outs to our good air quality and water, and that sense of wilderness and wildness that inspires us as well. And lastly, we have infrastructure. Infrastructure re relies on ecosystem services in order to create a livable place for us humans. The two most important ecosystem services is moderation of fires and flood prevention. Without an e intact functioning ecosystem, none of us could live here, and it's important to not infringe upon our ability to have homes or to transport. And with that, I hope that you have gained a slightly broader perspective of how the whole community values the environment. And I pass it back to Corinna. <coughs> Okay, so um, in all of those things that Chauncey was talking about, you know, the theme of access came up a number of times. So I just want to make a note here um, that access was something that many people highlighted as, as a real positive. Access to the outdoors really enhanced their engagement with and, and connection with the environment. But I think it's really important to acknowledge and think about the fact that access is not equal and that for many people, access is a challenge. Um, and, and probably for all of us included for various different reasons, whether it's we don't have time to spend as much time uh, relating to the outdoors or directly appreciating it in the way that we would like to. Uh, maybe that's because some of us need to live far away because the, the cost of housing in Jackson is so high that people need to tr spend a lot of time commuting. Access may not be equal because people don't always have a way to get to uh, these places of connection with the outdoors. Um, and because they don't have a car or because the public transportation network doesn't take them there. Um, there are any number of, of other reasons as well that create differences in the degree of access. And I think it's really important to think about this because one of the things that we're trying to highlight is the many ways that we depend on the ecosystem and environment, whether we acknowledge it or not. But people's ability to see that is gonna be a lot higher if they do have those opportunities to actually engage with the ecosystem. Um, so, um, to kind of wrap this all up and bring things together here, um, we pulled out from all the kind of uh, uh, list of, of different ecosystem services and things that the ecosystem does for us that, that Chauncey expounded upon, um, we came up with this table um, that I, I don't want to get too stuck in trying to read the table and all the things, but basically the point is we have all these, these different key ecosystem services 
and we have them related to the different kind of five community attributes. And what should be evident is that many of the same key services come up again and again. Um, they are things like clean air, clean water, a deep and sustained snowpack, key wildlife and fish species, the sense of wildness. These are important across many different sectors, across many different perspectives. And I think this is a really important take home message because it suggests a, a degree of cohesion. Um, and that if we were going to start talking about how do we assess the state of the environment, this is where I would begin with this list. Um, and these all can be broken down into measurable indicators of how we're doing with these different ecosystem services. And I think, you know, I'm not going to go into depth there. Um, Shiva gave a very clear explanation of how we might unpack that for wildlife species and, and wildness. How do we get to uh, key measurable attributes of wildlife? Um, and how can we assess the state of that, of wildlife? Well, we could do the same thing for all of these things. And in fact, a lot of the information is already out there. It's a matter of pulling it together and, and under this framework. Um, I think the challenge that, that actually I think Linda Marigliano mentioned it in her uh, summary of the, the round table um, was the idea of, of scale. At what scale do we measure those things? And that's, that's another challenge. So that, there's plenty to think about still. Um, something I want to really point out here though is the idea that, okay, we all recognize that we use and appreciate through use the many things that the environment does for us. But we don't often have a way to formally express that in financial value. And this goes back to something called the paradox of value that was uh, first laid out by Adam Smith back in the 1700s, which is the idea that the things that we often have the greatest value of use, put the greatest value in terms of use on them, are frequently things that we don't actually have much value for in exchange. So we don't put a market value on these things. Um, and that creates a challenge because, as Jonathan so clearly laid out, we don't have a mechanism to value them in a way that is comparable with the, the short-term market economy that we live in. Um, what I want to illustrate, though, is there actually are ways that we can try to put a financial value on the things that the ecosystem does for us. Um, and there are reasons that we might not want to do this, and that's a very important philosophical discussion to have. But I think it's really important to think about the fact that we could um, actually start doing this. Um, and there are a couple of different mechanisms for doing that, and I'm just going to go through four of them as examples. The first is avoided costs. These are, uh, and for example, if the, a healthy ecosystem prevents flooding, we avoid costs due to the damage of flooding. That is a service that the ecosystem provides, and we can try to put a value on uh, the costs that we do not incur thanks to this functioning ecosystem. Replacement costs. Um, this is what would it cost to replace an ecosystem service if it were not there? So, for example, clean water. Um, our healthy, intact, functioning ecosystems provide clean water. Uh, if they were not doing that, what would we have to do to engineer our way out of that problem and engineer ourselves some clean water that we all depend on? Um, that's replacement cost. Hedonic pricing, this is something that is uh, very easy to see here in Jackson. Um, that is the value, the extra value that gets on, put onto something because of the, um, the enjoyment value. Um, so for example, housing, very expensive here. Much more so than it would be in a place uh, of similar if you took away <coughs> the ecosystem around us. The, the enjoyment value that people feel promotes them to pay more to live here, for those who can't afford it, obviously. Um, contingent valuation, lastly, is what we would pay to keep that ecosystem service intact, or what we would not pay if it wasn't there. Um, so for example, uh, there was a study recently in Glacier National Park asking people, what would you be willing to pay to keep the glaciers, or what would you not pay to come here if there were no glaciers? Would you not come here anymore? Um, that, that is a direct cost in terms of the travel cost that people are willing to pay to come there. They wouldn't pay that anymore, perhaps, if there weren't glaciers. That was, that, that's an example of how you start getting at contingent valuation. Um, so I just point these out as, you know, hopefully to kind of start some discussion about 
how we might explicitly recognize the value of these things that we all know intuitively are so important to our lives, but that we don't put into any kind of value framework that allows us uh, to make decisions in a way that acknowledges those values. Um, so. so just to, to wrap up and kind of say, we summarize what I hope you take away from this talk. Um, I think that looking at the way that we try to look at things through the lens of ecosystem services um, helps to show us exactly how much the ecosystem and environment do for us on a daily basis, raise our awareness about that, and hopefully raise our appreciation for that. Um, I think it's also shown us how many of the things that we value are things that everyone values. Whether they come at it from one perspective or a different perspective, these things are all connected, and there really is a common core set of ecosystem services. Um, and the, these are things that we can begin to assess and monitor over time to see how we're doing in terms of uh, maintaining a, a healthy environment. Um, and finally, I think, uh, I hope that we've highlighted how we don't typically fully acknowledge the real value of these things that we sometimes take for granted, sometimes don't even think about, sometimes we do take, do appreciate, but we don't put value on them. Um, in the same way that we put on other things in our lives. Um, and hopefully, um, thinking about these in terms of explicitly expressing value might provide some new ways to think about our priorities and our decisions that we make, um, taking into account those full values. So just to end here, um, I think uh, it's no surprise that, that the environment, there's a huge set of challenges around the environment in Jackson Hole. Um, and, and these are things that really came up in, in our round table, um, the, the idea of loving it to death. Um, we, we love it, we need it, we are using it intensively at, at an increasing rate, and that creates impacts that collectively present some threats to our environment. Uh, we need to try to figure out that balance between use and um, keeping it intact. Um, and, and related to that is the idea of managing for the whole. Uh, managing, we, we have heard again and again that it is not just one thing that makes this region special. It's the combination of many different things. It's the fact that we have fantastic recreations in a fantastically beautiful place with unique wildlife and a uniquely intact ecosystem and a fantastic art scene. It's all these things together that make this a special place and that we need to think about the connections among these and manage for the whole picture, not just for any one of those single attributes. And uh, so with that, you know, I, I'll end, um, and I hope this has been stimulating in bringing together some things that we all kind of know, but maybe pro propelling them forward uh, in a couple of new thought directions. So I hope that we'll uh, have some, some good conversations over lunch. Thank you.